Woke up in the early AM, then reload Woke up energy and ammunition, pray on foes Woke up armor with that armor plated, how we roll Woke up cause you never know what's coming On patrol, on patrol, on patrol, on patrol you want to change your financial life? Well, you got to change your habits. Marlene, what was that quote you were mentioning earlier? Habits are what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not a choice, but they are our habits. The great Aristotle. Woo! If you want to know how to make more money by developing better habits, that's this video in this episode of Get Money with Your Money Smart Guy happening right now. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement headquarters here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. I am fired up today. Why? Our good friends here, Jose and Marlene Guy, time business partners here from Los Angeles. Bro, last week we were just rolling around your Ferrari, just tearing right. it up in uh, in LA. That's right. All right, Marlene, thanks for letting, me, letting him go out and play. Oh, absolutely. P appreciate that. Yeah, that's had a <laughs> now, good time. We, now we got this beautiful snow scene over here. Right? Oh, yeah. We are like, <laughs> we are like kids. We never see snow, Sheena, uh, in LA. They're so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do snow angels here later. We have to drive four hours to see the snow maybe once a year for 20 minutes, so this is a treat for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's nasty, that's right. And at 60 degrees, we're, we're cold in oh, LA. Oh yeah, we're now, freezing. You know? yeah. <laughs> they got a jacket. Yeah. Got a jacket. We got short sleeves here in Chicago. Listen, the very unique thing about this video here is that both the, the, the couples that you're seeing, my wife and I, and that guy Tans, we both, we both made $100,000 last month in business as entrepreneurs, living our best life because of the business world, because of the, uh, the, ins the insurance industry that we're in. And uh, I wanna give you guys some thoughts and ideas because we, all of us, we came from nothing. Born in Mexico, where, right. where are you guys from? Uh, Guadalajara? Guadalajara, where mariachi and tequila come from. So you're that's welcome, right, we make right. the parties happen. <laughs> La Ciudad de Mexico, so very similar. But okay, we both came here at age three, except we're 10 years apart, so yeah. Same high school. Same, Same high school, 10 years apart. Go, go Huskies, if you're a Husky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you, you guys weren't raised around, you know, wealth building, trust fund, uh, well no to do school, spoon, no. no, 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 what do you call that, cardigan over your shoulders? Ed Chapo is my uncle, by the way. Huh? Ed Chapo. <laughs> so, he's, he's in trial right now, right? <laughs> I think he's in trouble. He's in trial and trouble, yeah. Yeah, TNT. definitely, yeah. no, 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 no silver spoon in our mouths, definitely. My mom was a housekeeper her whole life. My dad always had two jobs, and growing up, they just reminded us of how much they sacrificed to bring us here so that yeah. we can chase the American dream. So That's that right. was the example we wow. saw. Wow. Right. Same with my mom. I mean, mom, dad came here, they said, Separated. She raised four kids by herself, no excuses, ran her own business, she was mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. And I saw her hustle, man. I saw her hustle, and I'm the youngest of four, and uh, that was the example that we that I got, her example with her parents, and we just use that example as a platform to say, what what what's next for us? What can we go out there and do? Yeah. So fortunate that uh, someone recruited me to the right industry. Well, let's talk about that. So the, the background that you came from, the background a lot of you are watching <coughs> this video comes from uh, had nothing, you know, the whole th thought process of, man, you need money to make money. By the way, we all demolish that. You're looking at two people here that's living our best life, high six-figure income, seven-figure income. And uh, it didn't take us to have a lot of money to make a lot of money. Nope. So that, that, was, that, was a, that was a stereotype that's out there. But let's talk about habits today. What are some of the different financial habits that you guys are following today that you weren't following before? And because you follow these habits, you are making more money today. So number one, how do you look at tax refunds versus actually paying taxes? So what are you guys' thoughts about that? You know, people today, especially going towards the end of the year to the beginning of the year, it's like, can't wait till the beginning to get my tax refund. <laughs> I think I remember thinking about that probably 10 plus years ago yep. when, I, when I got a couple thousand dollars back. Um, who knows, I don't even remember anymore. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a mindset we gotta change, man. I mean, if you keep if you think of that, that with that mindset, then you're gonna stay as an employee, which is W-2. And the goal is to go from W-2 to a 1099 uh, entrepreneur and learn mm -hmm. that so that you look forward to paying taxes. Because yeah. when you're paying taxes, that means you're making a whole lot more money. So you gotta get out of that mindset of, man, what am I gonna get? What's the government gonna give me? The, the dependency, I'm relying on somebody else to right. pay me to take care of me. That mindset's gotta change completely. So you definitely have to break that habit of, of small thinking, mediocrity, of scarcity, of who can give me more. 
versus what can I do more? Yeah. Excuse me, how, well, how can I do more to become more yeah. so that my value goes up? If my value goes up as an individual, then I'm going to make more money. I'm going to also going to attract more money. And that's the 1099 mindset. And then you look forward to paying your taxes. Yeah. But, you know, in, in our, in our sure. position, when we got started, you realize, wow, here's our income. Here's the write-offs. Yep. So we get to use our money now, play with our money now, invest our money now. Mm -hmm. We pay our taxes later after write-offs and then ultimately end up paying less in taxes. That's something a lot of people need to learn, how to go from you know, trying to get taxes versus pay less in taxes and uh, keep more of your money. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. should know you just bought a Ferrari this year. And, yeah. and that's going to be a nice write-off uh, for you guys this year too as exactly. well. Exactly, for know? the business. So the, that beautiful Ferrari that you see, that's another business, man. Yeah, so instead of looking for tax refunds, you should be looking for tax write-offs. Yes. That's right. right, yes. Right. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah. Yes. I think a lot of people, um, they use tax returns as a piggy bank, you know, or I have friends that I, I often hear will say, you know what, no, because if I stay here, you know, I get this back at the end of the year. But I think it's just so much more free when you get to be an entrepreneur work for yourself because then you get to control that. So I like having mm -hmm. that kind of control over our financial situation. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Investopedia has got a word definition for that word, in taxification. So in taxification is a sudden euphoria feeling that you get a large tax refund, but simultaneously realize all that is is an overpayment of what you overpaid the government. You're just getting it back in check because how much money do we earn by overpaying our taxes throughout the whole year? Zero percent That's interest. Right. That's right. <laughs> and you guys, uh, which, which leads us into number two, because number two rich habit is Marlene, you, you know, kids, you got two boys, you got a household, you got a family I'm sure you take care of. Uh, you're in business with your brother, you're in business with your sister. My whole family's in business with us, yes. Right? Crazy. But you're always talking about this habit, which is always paying yourself first. Yes. So talk to us about that. Yes. Why, why is that such a rich habit? My first career, actually, I was a loan officer for six years. And I remember the mortgage broker would make us invest in personal development. And we would pay for our seminars. And I always noticed that the people that invested in their personal development and investing in themselves, they always made the most money. And the people that thought this is hokey, it doesn't work, they never made money because they never invested in themselves. I think the wealthy just take the time to give to themselves first. And I think as women, we give to everybody, our spouse, our kids, our business. We don't give to ourselves. And in savings, it's the same thing. We pay everybody and we never save for ourselves. So I started my first savings fund when I was 23 years old and it was a hundred dollars a month, a hundred bucks. And we can afford it because we spend that on our nails. But do you know how <laughs> freeing it is, you know, the peace of mind to be, you know, 28 and actually have 75,000 in savings. I mean, no Chanel, no nothing feels sexier than that because you have freedom, yeah. that savings. Yeah, because it's not an external feeling like nails and the fakeness is no. sometimes. Not to say that nails are all fake. I Although like, they're important, yeah, they're important, right? important things. It's important. You know, yeah. guys, our haircuts, you know, yeah. uh, get lined up. That's right. But it's also good to know that it's on the inside. It's yeah. peace of mind. I think yeah. when you're young, you want the fast car and you want that stuff. But the older you get, especially for women, we want security. We want yeah. peace of mind. We want to make sure we can pay for health insurance, our kids are taken care of. And that's why the the habit of saving, I think it's not something that is a part of all cultural because we live in a micro society of I want things today. We don't think long term, unfortunately. I think that's where mentorship comes from and maybe seeking, maybe taking financial courses. You know, I think our awesome investment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. We've had a pattern of investing ourselves and it stops for a lot of people at age 21. From, you know, going to school, your kids, your parents may invest in the school and then you go to uh, high school, then your first time you gotta go invest in a field trip. Maybe mm -hmm. you have to go earn that money yourself to go pay for a field trip to go out there and, and you know increase your value, increase the experience. Then you go to college and then you invest in yourself and you pay a lot of money sometimes when you yeah. don't have financial aid and you invest. You don't question that $200 book. <laughs> you don't question that course, that six month course that could cost you $5,000, that trade school that could cost you $10,000, $20,000 because you, you saw value in that. Don't get him started on trade schools. And uh, <laughs> that's the biggest, you know, ripoff. So somewhere there's a cutoff where, you know, you, we heard it before, either you're growing every day or you're dying every day. And for at a certain point, you become a, a mature adult, mature adult, and then you stop. Yep. You stop the, the personal development, you stop the books, you stop the trade schools, you stop the, the programs, you stop the conventions. Why do you stop? And the moment you stop doing that, yep. which is the, the worst habit you can do, guess what happens? Your, your income drops. 
because you're, you're now, your mindset's a level three, four, five, and it's yeah. stopped. You haven't got to level six, seven, eight. It's funny that you mentioned that because as much as we've been around winners, we've yes. also been around quitters. Oh. Yes. Right? Okay. And yeah. and listen, I'm not judging anybody that quits because that's, that, that's their decision. Right. But with that being said, even if they quit and we watch them quit, right. is their life any better because they quit? Nope. Versus the ones that decided to stick it together, even though they didn't like it, but they right. stuck with it. Right. How much better have their lives turned out yeah. versus the ones that decided to quit, lower their standards, and not pay themselves first? That's right. Have you seen anybody quit and make it? <laughs> quit and make it? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, people that quit, quit everything. Yeah. Everything in their life quitting is quitting. Quitting becomes you a habit. Quit, yeah. um, you know, yeah. you're in the gym, you quit any habit, and people quit marriages like it's no big deal because that is the habit. And I think it's also we're a product of just associations. Yeah. You know, in Spanish, or your parents growing up when you're Latino, they always have this Spanish saying, Dime con quien te diré quien eres. That means birds of a feather flock together. and. If you're around people that don't save and they're broke and they don't read and you're not going to be successful. If you right. want to be successful, you got to find people that are successful and get in with that crowd because you become who you're around. Yeah, and, it's, and it's, if you're around that crowd, it's so much easier to continue to pay yourself first mm -hmm. and put stuff away. Because oh, even, yes. even our mentor, Patrick, he's always honest about yes. our finances and reinvesting yeah. back into our business. Yeah, there's a yes. quote that says that uh, we already know what it feels like to quit but we don't know what it feels like to not quit. So imagine if you don't quit for the first time and you stick to something that you decided to start and you follow through, you don't know what that feels like for most people. They just quit along the way for their first uh, sign of adversity, so it's, it's awesome. important. Third one, willing to take calculated risks. It's the third rich habit. So you guys have your own office lease. Yeah. You guys are making a little bit of money. What was it like for you guys to start making a little bit of money? Not that you're making $100,000 more like you are right now, but what was it like to have, to have you piece out some of that and being in a position where you're paying more for your business than your own house? <laughs> That's right. I'm going to start with that. Investing now, I think um, it's it's a part of business, but I think just starting starting in business, you know, I think um, we were just risk takers. We were just dreamers, you know. We just we didn't want to do what everybody else does. In fact, I whatever the government tells me to do, I do the complete opposite. If I saved like the government tells me, I'd be broke, you know. If I you know ate what the government holds me, you know, well, I said you know cancer rates are high. If I you know all the um, vaccinations the government tells me, I research everything and I make my own decision. So because I don't want to do what everybody else does, then you have what everybody else has. So mm. <clears throat> yeah, mm. the risks are part of life, man. I mean, it, it is what it is. If you don't take any risks, you're just not going to get ahead. And uh, it's not really a risk when you think about it. Like the moment when you, you know, I don't know if you, I mean, you jumped out of airplanes, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. Marines, you jumped out of airplanes. Sure think about that, that feeling of, of taking that leap. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the not too long ago, we went white water rafting with some of the with some of the. I said yeah. we. We didn't see they <laughs> us, the guys with white water rafting, and then we'll be going paintballing tonight. We'll be going paintballing tonight. We'll we'll be going paintball. tonight yeah. There was a small cliff. Uh -huh. the cl they were doing some cliff jumping, and there was a few guys that got to the end of the cliff, and they were thinking twice, but because they saw everyone else do it and they landed safely, they jump off that cliff. But that moment, you have that feeling in your stomach. Uh, that moment where you have that little bit of doubt, a little bit of fear, you're scared yeah. a little bit, you have to act on that. So in business, you, you act when you're not ready. Yeah. You just take that leap and boom, all of a sudden you realize it's not that bad. Like the first office lease. You're right. The first office lease, our first convention, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand hour uh, commitment that we have yeah. to these hotel events. Right. And you, you put the money out there and you, or you buy a 200,000 hour car and you're thinking, am I ready? But your reality is you are ready. You just never had a $2,500 a month payment, right? So it's part of the process, but it starts when you're small. You take that leap and then all of a sudden it becomes so much easier. Yeah. And, and then you, you, just, you just don't think twice about it anymore. So it's part of it. As much as people can see physically when they work out, how their bodies change, right? People don't see how also mentally and entrepreneurially you can start changing for the better. Yeah. But it's not like you, you get abs right away. Right, yeah. uh, or or you see you know you see your immediate health. Except it's you, unless it's you. Uh, no, it's like I, I got a I got a one pack these days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe, maybe back in the day when I was in Marine Corps, oftentimes people say, you know, I I, I have to pay office expenses. I have to pay, you know, uh, uh, you know two hundred dollars for a convention ticket, without realizing that's actually a calculated risk. That's reinvesting, not yes. only reinvesting back into yourself, yes. but saying, you know what, let me discover something that I may not even know about. And you know, for the for uh, you guys, remember your first convention? What yeah. was that like for you? Yeah. Yeah. To, to an extent, that was also a calculated risk. Did you have any roommates Absolutely. when you had your first convention? Many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 many. 
Yeah, I think people, you know, people stick to what they know. They're comfortable. It's, it's, you know, sometimes we stick to a job that we hate, but we're there forever. Why? Because we're familiar with it and people stick to what they know. But I wanted to do what the wealthy people do. We're lucky enough to have found a mentor mm -hmm. that was able to guide us in business because if you want to be wealthy, you need a mentor. You definitely need a mentor. And we're a product of mentorship. And we always reinvest it into our business. You know, you can't do the busy work, the filing, the paperwork. That's, that's an hour hourly job when you're supposed to be the entrepreneur, the head of the organization, you can't do both. And even when we thought we couldn't afford it, even when we thought we weren't ready, we always make sure to invest in the business. And people see the finished product now, 10 years later, but that's not how we start. That's not how any business owner starts. You know, it starts with the small investments in the beginning, and then eventually you build up the habits, and now we invest a quarter mil on a seminar. That's and, great, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. you know, the next level. Man, success leaves clues, right? You're successful. We've had a degree of success, and you get a, at one point, you paid $200 for your office rent or $300 for a desk or $500 for that or for a flight. I remember doing that because I saw, I said, if, if, if this guy has the life that I want, I got to do exactly what he did. Mm. That's it. And that, don't even question anything. Just be quiet. Follow the rules. There's a level of uh, success. There's, there's a trail. Go follow it. Yeah. My first big event, I flew out to Orlando, Florida, broke as a joke, uh, roomed with 10 guys, I think. <laughs> We ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We're taking turns, taking a shower, and, and there just wasn't any space. But I got to this event because I knew there was value in there mm -hmm. uh, at that event. And then all of a sudden, my vision stretched, my dream stretched. If it wasn't for me doing it, putting it on a credit card, I would not be where I'm at today. Yeah. And I said, if I did that and it worked, the first time, I, wow, I experienced something magical. Mm -hmm. Next time I had a, a shot to invest in, in something, something mm -hmm. small, I knew something good was coming out of it. Yep. So that was a habit. Yep. So that was a habit of doing it over and over again. Now, now we just don't question it. What's next? What's next investment? Let's go out there and invest. Don't even question it. We just know the ROI. Love it. Yeah. Last question for you guys before you wrap up, Marlene. What does it feel like now to make? What does it feel like now to start making a hundred thousand a month? You know, it's funny because. Um, <clears throat> You know, when you start a business, you're you're chasing that. You're like, man, if I could just. When you're broke, I remember thinking, man, if we could make five thousand dollars a month, and we weren't behind on our office rent, that would be awesome. And that's how entrepreneurs start. But it's not about the money. It's about the person you become. And it's funny because we check our bank account, and we're like, oh, okay, cool. But we always just we laugh and we reminisce. Like, oh, that one time that we had a yard sale all and you sold all your shoes. I'm like, yeah. All the time, man. That was that was the best. I think it's 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 the chase, it's the the thrill of of, of growing, of chasing something. So and I think um, you know That's I want right. to add another zero to that because I yeah. always want to be chasing the next level. But yeah. you still reminisce, yeah. and it. you get a chance to see how far you've come, and also in a relationship, you know how far we've come. And I think that's what makes it special. It's the person you become. Yeah, just like you said, uh, I'll piggyback on that. The chase becomes a habit. The chase becomes a habit, and then. And then all of a sudden, you're not looking at the numbers anymore. You're not looking at your app where you have $15,000 this week, the next week, $25,000, the following week, another $10,000. All of a sudden, you realize 45 days, you made $178,000. You're not looking at, the, you're not chasing that anymore. It's coming to you. Mm -hmm. If you're, the journey is part of the chase, you're, you're, you're headed towards somewhere, it's going to keep on flowing. So uh, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, man. It's good to take care of your, your in-laws and your mom and to travel the world and your, you know, your kids not to worry about money and to drive exotic cars. That journey is, is special, man. And, and showing people to get to that same position is special. Well, what we do today on a day to day is special to see our guys now making their dreams come true yes. and making 20, 30, 40, 50 a month. Themselves, it's just not you. Themselves, man. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's what maker. it's all about, man. Yeah. yeah, don't be a king, be a king maker. That's, that's the game. That's a great yeah. habit right there. Yes. That's right. So that's we, right. it's more than just three habits during this conversation. <laughs> yes. good, good. Yeah, I always say there's no success without a successor. That's right. That's I right. love it. Well guys, I hope you gain a lot of value from this video. And because you have been watching our YouTube videos and been following us on Instagram, I am actually going to be launching an Instagram giveaway. Check this out. About to cross 10,000 followers on Instagram. And just to say thank you for being a part of the Money Smart Movement community, uh, for following the Money Smart Guy page. I'm going to be giving away, as soon as we cross over 10,000 followers on Instagram, a humidor for 100 cigars called the Old Glory. We show a picture of it right here by my friend Brett, who owns Toolbackology in Manassas, Virginia. And we're gonna get sent it from his 
uh, tobacco shop, his cigar shop, to your address. But we're going to pick a random winner. There's, go to our Instagram. We're going to have some guidelines there on how to get this Instagram giveaway. And guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow Jose and Marlene Guy Time. We'll put their Instagram handles here too as well. Make sure you follow them on Instagram. Watch their story. Watch their journey. They're based out of Los Angeles in a server called Burbank. <coughs> and if you uh, have been watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications, boom. And uh, you subscribe to our channel and be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and subscribe to our business page. With that being said, guys, next Tuesday, we have another episode of Get Money. On behalf of Jose, I'm Marlene Gaetan. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. <laughs>